Good morning. Welcome to Live at 1010 with Word of God Health and Healing Center. Again, I just want to thank you for joining in and uh, tell you what a privilege it is and an honor to be here with you. There's nothing more important to me than to be able to share God's Word with God's people. Uh, I know right now, we talked about it yesterday, and that's uh, we're going to kind of stay with that. God's Word is the answer for everything. There's nothing outside of God's Word that can give you and take you to the places in life that you need to go. Because He wants us to have life, and life therefore more abundant. And that's our scripture, you know. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy it. But I have come that you might have life and have life therefore more abundant. That's a great word. That's a great promise for us. So, you know, today we're going to look in here. We're going to go through a little bit more scripture. I'm going to try not to be so long-winded today. I know I went a little long on you yesterday, but it's exciting to me. Every time I get into God's word, it just um, it brings joy to me. It, it lifts me up. And, you know, that's what he wants it to do. He wants it to lift us up. So before we start this morning, let's just say a word of prayer that God will take control of this and that he will uh, instruct me and us and he'll open our hearts and our minds to be able to receive from him today because that's what we're here today. That's what we're here today. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time for, to be able to come together in your name and to discuss your word. And we ask you, Lord, that you'd direct us and you'd guide us and you'd open our hearts to receive today. Lord, give us ears to hear, eyes to see. And Lord, don't let us um, have any kind of distractions today. I pray you'd bind everything that would try to keep us from hearing your truth. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, again, I want to thank you for joining in this morning. So we'll get right into the word here. If you got your Bibles, and you know me, I say I encourage you always to have your Bible. Get your Bible out and see the Word for yourself so you know it's there. That's the number one thing that we need to know that what we're saying is in this book because this book is life. This book is life. So today, if you do have your Bible, let's turn to John 15. We're going to talk about abiding, abiding. You know, if you look up the word abiding in the dictionary, I'm just going to read it. I did write down that. Abide, it says to remain, to continue, stay, to continue in a particular condition, attitude, relationship. And I like this one, to accept without opposition or question. That's what we got to do with this word of God. Accept it without any question or any opposition to it. I mean, if it's said here in this word, that settles it for us. I mean, that, that's it right there. There ain't no other way. If God says something in his word, I don't care what I hear from myself, what my body says, what I hear from outside sources on the TV, the news media. It don't mean nothing to me. God's word is the truth for me. And that's where we got to get. we got to settle that issue in our hearts. Number one thing, God's word. God's word. So let's start right there in John 15 and verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word. You're clean through the word. Which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. Now, this is Jesus talking. Again, these are the red letters, the red letters. And when I read the red letters, I mean, I've said this before, you know me, I, I, I look at that, he's written that in his blood, the blood he shed for me and you. And that's, that's powerful, that's powerful. So we'll go on. Verse five, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. You can do nothing without him. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, 
and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 7, If ye abide in me, and my words, my words, the words of this Bible, abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. So there you go right there. Disciples. That's what he said. Go into all the world and make disciples. What's a disciple? You know, it's a student. It's a student of the teacher, the master, Jesus. And what is the number one goal of the disciple or the student? It's to become like the teacher. And that's what this is talking about right here. Abiding in him. Abiding in his word. And we'll be coming. We're a branch. We're a branch. He's the vine. We're the branch. So whatever the vine has in it comes through the branch. That's us. That's us. That's powerful. That's powerful already. Already. I mean, joy is rising up. I hope it is in you because this is God's word. And that's what we're here today for is to encourage one another. Lift each other up and to see God's truth. So right there, that was um, verse 8. Let's go on to verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. How would you like to have full joy going on in your life today? I mean... What does the Bible say? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Joy. Joy. I mean, you know, uh, we all need that. There's so many things in this world right now that uh, it's bringing you down and showing you the doom and gloom of everything going on. But this right here, this right here, it will stay in it. Putting it in us every day, all the time, and abiding in it. You know, like I said right here, to abide in something is to remain in it, to continue, stay. It's a condition, an attitude, a relationship. So that's where we want to be. We want this relationship. And, and that's something, too, you need to think about. A relationship is something that you treasure. You know, if you're, if you're related to something and it's your, you, you know, you're putting time in it. These people mean something to you. Like, I mean, we have uh, relatives. They're our family. God's our, he's our family. Jesus is our brother. If you want to think about it that way, he's our big brother. <laughs> I know that sounds, you know, we're probably making that too simple. Some people say, well, I can't believe you're talking about that like that. Well, he's the one that said it. He's the one that said it. So let's just go on with that. Here's another word for abide, and that word is inherent, which is a much stronger word. I want you to look at that. I looked that definition up. Inherent is, is like abide, but it's just a little bit on the stronger side. Inherent means existing in someone or something as a permanent and inseparable element, quality, attribute. Now that's pretty powerful. Inseparable. And I believe that's what this is saying right here. If you abide in my words and my words abide in you, if you're inseparable, if that's the driving force of your life is this word of God, I don't care what it is, you can't be separated from it. You're not going to take anything out here. You're not going to doubt what this word says. It's settled for you. For you, the word of God is the truth. You're in that vine. You're a branch. And whatever he says, whatever comes out of the, the vine, is coming into the branches, which is us. That's, that's, that's pretty powerful. That's powerful. So I don't know if you've ever thought about that like that. You know, uh, God... He wants to be that one, that much one with us. He wants us to be so much one with him that, have you ever heard the old term, uh, you know, people say, well, he's just a chip off the old block talking about like a man and his son. He's just like his dad. That's what he wants for us. We're his children. He wants us to be a chip off the old block. They're just like, they're just like their dad. We can be. We can be, and the only way we can it's to abide in this word. Like you said, if you abide in this word, and it abides in you, you'll ask anything, and it shall be given to you. How powerful is that? Why do you think he says that? 
Now, a lot of people say, oh, there they go, there they go. They're saying that, you know, name and claim. I'm not talking about that. When he says, if you ask anything, it shall be given to you. If you're abiding in this word and this word's abiding in you, you're not going to ask for anything outside of the word because the word's the only thing that you're going to want. But that's the promises, every promise that you can find in this Bible, everything that it says you can have or you can be, you can ask for it, and you'll have it. He'll give it to you. That's, that's good news. That is good news right there. Healing, deliverance, prosperity, you know, anything. That's what he wants you to have. It's his, it's his will. And that's one of the things we're going to do, too. We're going to do a series on God's will to heal. And we're going to give 30 reasons out of the Bible that proves it's God's will to heal. Now, in this day and this time, we're going to do a study on that. I mean, it, it's not going to be no short thing. It's going to take us a while to do it. And what I think I'm going to do, I mean, I've been uh, with the Lord and uh, talking with Him and praying with Him. And what we're going to probably do is we're going to do that one night through the week where we can go a little bit longer. I want to try to keep these 10, 10 things short where I don't take up so much of your time in the middle of the day here. And uh, maybe on a Thursday night, I hadn't decided what night it's going to be yet, but we'll, we'll do that. We'll go through this study. And it may be an hour hour and a half maybe time each night so we're going to deeply go into God's word and, and get the proof because you know you can't have faith for anything if you don't know God's will for it you know we can only put faith in when we know what God's will is about a subject or a topic and healing is a big thing needed in this world today so many people are dealing with sicknesses and diseases and infirmities and, and you know they want to be free they want to be healed but they're not really sure that it's absolutely God's will for them to be healed. You know, sometimes there's things been taught that, you know, God may be showing you something through this and just endure and, you know, that's that's some of the things out there. I know that that's kind of hard for the, maybe some of y'all have heard that. I've heard it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a minute, but, you know, I think what we got to do is take the time and put forth the effort to go into God's Word and find the truth about what He says about healing. I don't believe He can preach the gospel without preaching healing, and talking about healing, because everywhere where I read in the gospels, when Jesus was having meetings and everything, He healed all the sick. There never was one of them that says, you know, He healed all of them but two, or He healed all of them but three, or even one. All were healed. So, I mean, that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend some time and do that. But I want to uh, get back on that word inherent for a minute, and I want to give you some great news. And, you know, we, like I said, we're going to keep it short this morning because it, it's just uh, I just want to give you some great encouragement this morning about God and his word. And he, he, he's already lit me up this morning with this. I mean, and... <laughs> It don't take much of God's word to get me that way. I get so tore up by it because, I mean, that's how much he loves us. He loves us so much that he came to this earth. He sent his son and died on a brutal, brutal cross for us for no other reason. And, and you need to take that personally. I mean, you know, think about this. If you were the only one in this earth that needed what he came and done, he would have still done it. And, and that's the fact. He'd have done it just for you. He'd have done it just for me. In fact, he did do it just for you and just for me. So look at it that way. Look at it that way and take a hold of it and, and just understand it was all pure love, pure love, the reason he came. But right here, I want to read that definition of inherent again. It says, it's existing in someone or something as a permanent and inseparable element, quality, or attribute. That's a big. That's very big. And you get to thinking about that. Now, you know, how can we be a permanent or inseparable element with God? You know, I mean, here we are in this old world and this earth, and he's way off up there in some distant heaven. I mean, which is not the truth either. You know, he's our father. He's our father. I want you to turn to Romans right now and get ready for some heartwarming great news right here. <laughs> Romans 8. 
and then we're gonna start right there. Yeah, let's just start in uh, verse 35. And it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him, Christ, through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Does that sound like inherent to you? <laughs> we just gave the definition of that. It's existing in someone or something as a permanent and inseparable element, quality or attribute. He just told us that right there. He just told us that right there. I know you got to be smiling right now. That has got to have warmed your heart. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it again. I want to read it again. Let this get down deep into you. Because this is where God wants us to know. This is our position in Him. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation. I mean, you know, there's tribulations in the world. He said that. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I've overcome the world. He's overcome that. We're in Him and we've overcome it too or distresses, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we, who's we? You, me, all the children of God. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. Uh, you know, we're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. How, I mean, that's a big thing. That's a big thing. How can you be more than a conqueror? Think about that for a minute. That's, you know, more than a conqueror. If you conquer something, I mean, you know, you're the conqueror. I mean, what could be more than conquer? This is what makes us more than conquerors. We didn't have to fight to fight. We didn't have to be in the battle. Jesus fought the fight. He won the battle for us and gave us the victory. The victory's ours. We're more than conquerors because we didn't even have to fight that fight. Now all we got to do is be in faith, believe, and receive that victory that he gave us. <laughs> That's awesome right there. You know it is. That's awesome. So we're going to go on and then number in verse 38 it says, For I am persuaded persuaded. I mean, you know, I've been persuaded through this word. I'm convinced is what I am, and I hope you are too, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities or powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. You can't take us apart. You can't take us apart. From the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a pretty simple thing this morning. I mean, you know, it's quick, it's simple, but I'm going to tell you how huge that is. If you can just every time in this, in this day, today when something comes up and, you know, sometimes uh, you'll get a thought of desperation or, you know, I just feel all alone or, you know, what's going on, you know? Does anybody care? Jesus, the Father. Holy Spirit, they all care. They're with us all the time. So they'll never leave us or forsake us. Right here. This scripture. We're inseparable. Nothing can take us away from the love of God. Nothing. So just be, just be full of that today. Be full of that. Be happy. Be joyful. Today, you know, like it said in uh, John, We'll go back right there one more time and look at that. And then we're gonna, I'm going to close this. Because I think that's enough said today. That's enough for me to go 
and walk around today feeling 10 foot tall and bulletproof because there ain't nothing out there in this world, not one thing, that can separate me from the love of God, that can separate me from Christ. That's, our, that's awesome. That's awesome. So right there in 15, John 15, in 11, he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy, my joy, Jesus' joy, might remain in you, and that your joy may be full. Be full of joy today. Be full of joy today. And, you know, be in prayer about this. Because we need uh, all your prayers. You know, God works through people that come together. We need to get in, in accord with each other. We need to be praying for each other. We need to pray that this thing will be able to get out here. People will hear this, this message. I mean, you know, they're not necessarily going to be here live with us, but they can go back and watch this. And a lot of people did yesterday. They can go back and watch it. And God can, what was said right here through these videos, God can take that word and reach down into somebody's heart and change our life just like that through a video it happens all the time I, I listen to uh, you know a brother in Christ and I'm going to tell you something God used that man more than anything in my life to draw me close to, to him and to reveal his truth to me you know he's made me free from a lot of things some of y'all know about me you know some of the trials and things that I went through in my life God's delivered me from all of them so that's what I'm here for is to be a vessel for God to pour his glory through, to pour his truth through, and to speak his word boldly so people can be free. That's the whole deal right there. We want to see this pe people free in this world. So I love y'all, and I thank you for joining in this morning, and I just want to pray a prayer of blessing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all these people that are here today, and I just uh, lift them up today, Lord, in your name that you'll just pour out blessings on them. You'll pour out things too great for them to even understand because you can do that. You can bless us beyond our imaginations. And Lord, I ask you now just to draw each and every one of us close. Open up our hearts and our minds today, Lord, to, and fill it with a hunger, a hunger to seek after you because if we're hungry and thirsty and come after you, you'll fill us. And that's the whole deal. We want to be filled with you today. So I pray, Lord, over their lives today. I speak healing into their life, prosperity, deliverance. And Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over all of them, over their hearts, their minds, their souls, their bodies, and their spirit. And we bind the wicked one that tries to come against them today. We come against all his works. And we loose your peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. I love you. See you tomorrow.